And the deeper we look, the more like us they seem. So what you just heard there is a soundbar from Sony. It's the S400. And that, my friend, is what we're reviewing today. Hi, folks. It's Andy Barrar, Handy Andy from HandyAndyMedia.com. And we're going to be looking at this soundbar from Sony. It's the S400. And the thing about this soundbar that I really like is the price point. This is coming around, I was going to say about three, dollars $400. I'm not exactly sure what the exact price point is. I got an early review but it is a mid-range soundbar and we're going to go and take a deep dive to see if this is something worth getting for your living room. So without further ado, you know how we do. Get your popcorn ready, folks. And cue the intro. Now, just to remind everybody, I did do an unboxing of this soundbar. So if you want to see that, hit me up on my YouTube channel. You'll be able to find the unboxing over there. But essentially, once you take everything out of the box, what you're going to find is you're going to get the S400 soundbar itself, the wireless subwoofer, you'll get a remote control for it, an optical cable, the two AC cables to power them both up, and the instruction manual, a quick start guide, and also a wall mounting template if you want to mount the soundbar directly on the wall. It actually has a flat back, so once you mount it, it'll be like nice and, and level. Because if there's one thing that bugs me is when people mount a soundbar and it's sagging, that's the last thing you want. So if you're going to do it, make sure you use that template to mount it onto the wall. Now, in my situation, I'm testing this out in my high-tech Airbnb suite, and I actually already have a soundbar shelf. And there's a reason why I have that. You'll notice that there is a baseboard heater. Now, previously, I had mounted a soundbar just above that. And I kid you not, it started to melt. You could actually see like the, the residue on the actual uh, heater from the melted soundbar. So I had to build this shelf there and then I put cord hiders as well so that I could hide uh, the exposed cords. Now, the was great thing about this one is the S400 fit perfectly like a glove in this uh, soundbar shelf that I had made. Custom designed too with, with leftover wood I had in my backyard. Anyways, I put, placed it on there. I even hid the cords in the cord concealers because I detest exposed cords that much. And then I did the same with the subwoofer. And then once that's done, it has a nice sleek look on the wall. It doesn't really take that much space. Much different than, these, than the stereo systems we had in the 80s and 90s. You know, we used to have these huge speakers everywhere. This is a minimalist design, but it's also very powerful. Now... In terms of the setup, you'll notice that in this suite, I have a projector screen. The problem with this projector is that it doesn't have an audio out and doesn't have Bluetooth. So what does your boy do? Well, I found out a beautiful hack. Essentially, from the projector, I ran the cable up through the roof, and then it comes down into a HDMI splitter. That splitter will actually take the audio signal out through a headphone jack, and then I attached it to a wireless Bluetooth receiver. That Bluetooth receiver then sends the signal to the soundbar on the other side of the room. The big issue with all of this, when I figured this out in my head, I'm like, theoretically, it should work. The only thing was the latency. Will there be latency in like the dialogue? Could you hear that delay as it's coming over? And I got to tell you, I don't know if it's the new Bluetooth standard or what's going on, but you cannot hear that latency or actually see it in dialogue with people. So this this system, if you want more information, hit me up in the comments. Um, it's a great hack, especially for these inexpensive projectors. Now, once I did that, to get the Bluetooth signal with the soundbar was super easy. You basically just have put both in pairing mode. It actually shows the soundbar receiver on the bottom, the name of the Bluetooth device, which I really liked. And then it was pretty much up and running, and then I started watching some Netflix. For this review, I watched Animal on Netflix, and the reason I did that is the sound design on here is just amazing. It's just like with the animals, uh, whoever like mixed this did a fantastic job. 
So what I'll do is rather than me talk about the sound, I'm just going to cut so you can hear a little bit about what it sounds like inside my high-tech Airbnb suite. It's a part of life. But there's more to these power struggles than mere savagery. And the baby is about to witness something remarkable. Neither of the two older males is as big as the bully. So you can tell just from listening to that, that it has this really immersive, almost cinematic sound. And that's because of that dig digital signal processing, I think it's called like S-Force, that Sony has. Now, Sony knows a thing or two about digital signal processing and all that stuff that happens on the back end. And what really impressed me is that even though there's only two speakers in the front, it almost gave you that surround sound type of experience. And I'm not sure how they did that, you know, from the digital side, but whatever they did, it works. And what makes that remarkable is that this budget, you know, soundbar sounds way more expensive than you're actually paying for it. And that is why I really, really, really like this. In fact, I was very disappointed that I had to take this all apart after uh, my review because compared to the soundbar that I have now, which was replacement for the other one that melted, um, it's like night and day. You can, like, sound bars can be loud, but to get that surround sound experience where it can be quiet and then get loud, which is very important in movies, especially in certain scenes, that experience just shows me or just reminded me, I, I should say, of how important audio is for the cinematic experience that we have, whether we're at home or in our living rooms or, or what have you. So if you really appreciate audio, and the role of audio in in the viewing experience, then I highly recommend you get this soundbar. It is sleek. It is super simple to set up. Very little wires, just the two power cables. You know, it comes with the optical cable, so if you want to connect to a TV, you can do it that way, or HDMI. So I gotta say, you know, for somebody who likes to nitpick on products and say, oh, I don't like this, I don't like this about that, having a hard time finding something wrong with this soundbar and subwoofer combo. So, Sony, y'all y'all make good soundbars. I can you know the proof's in the pudding and the pudding went into my ears. I listened to it and you did too in this review. Anyways, folks, I'm just basically saying if you're in, a, in the market for a mid-range soundbar, the S400 is definitely worth considering. Anyways, I hope you liked this review. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. Of course, subscribe to this channel and leave your comments below. What do you think about soundbars? Do you like it? Do you like a different brand? I want to know your thoughts um, about that as well. Once again, it's your boy, Andy Barrar. Handy Andy. Hit me up on my website, handyandymedia.com. Andy Barrar, signing out. See you again next time.